Let us pray. Dear Lord, we come humbly into your presence. We want to hear from you as we stop for a few moments to meditate on Scripture. Lord, speak to us, we pray. We are listening. Open our hearts. Lord, I pray that you will use my humble words so that we can all hear from you and not from me. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. This Palm Sunday, I want you to use your holy imagination. I want you to imagine that you are one of the disciples or one in the crowd who is following Jesus as he rides the donkey into Jerusalem. There is lots of excitement and everyone is, is shouting Hosanna and here is Jesus riding on a donkey. The prophecy is fulfilled that said, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you lowly or humble and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. In Jesus' day and in many parts of the world even today, to own a horse is to have a status. Not everyone can own a horse. But to own a donkey, even a humble, poor person could do that. So to ride on a donkey, it was a sign of lowliness. It was a sign of uh, not strength and power and splendor, but lowliness. Here is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords entering Jerusalem in the most lowly way. Oh, the humility of the Son of God. God himself showing his greatness in humility. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even death on the cross. That beautiful Philippian hymn that we can find in Philippians chapter 2 tells us about Jesus who, in the being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of man. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself. God humbling himself. What is this telling us about true greatness? The true greatness of God displayed in humility. Not in status, not in wealth, not in power but in humility. Open with me to Matthew chapter 21. The triumphal entry is recorded in all four Gospels. Let's look at it. In verse 5 is that beautiful prophecy about Jesus coming in humility, riding on a donkey. And thus, you are entering with Jesus into Jerusalem. Everyone is shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the other Gospels you may read, Welcome to the King who is coming in the name of the Lord. And in verse 10 we read, And when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved saying, who is this? In the Greek it says, esisti, and this word is the word that's connected with earthquake. The whole city was shaken, like in an earthquake. Everybody was in an uproar. Who is this? Who is coming? The king 
is coming. And the king has come. And what is the first thing he does as he has entered the city? He goes into the temple and clears the temple from the traders, from those who were there making money within the temple. He clears the temple and he says, My house will be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. You can read that in verse 13. He clears the temple. He demands purity in the place of worship. Last week I said to you how during this time of the pandemic we are forced to worship God in our own homes. Is your home pure? Is your home fit for worship? Moreover, is your heart fit for your worship? We read in the Bible that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost, of the Holy Spirit. The Samaritan woman asked Jesus, what is the place where we should worship God? Should we worship God in the mountain that our forefathers have worshipped? Or should we worship God in Jerusalem where the Jews have been worshipping? And Jesus says, the day is coming. And it has come that the true worshippers should worship God in spirit and in truth. For those are the ones that God is seeking worshiping God in spirit and in truth so as you worship today with us in your own home is your home is your life is your family pure is it fit for worshiping God as Jesus made those demands on the people of Jerusalem Soon he was rejected. Soon he was betrayed. He was scourged. He was nailed on a cross. They didn't want his rule. They didn't want that kind of a, a kingship, that kind of a rule. So they put him to death. And they thought that this would be the end of it. Yet today, more than 2,000 years later, Millions of people around the world welcome his rule and his reign. Millions of people around the world submit to his kingship, to his lordship. The king has come. And the king is coming again. Jesus himself said it. You can read it in Matthew 24, in Mark 13, or in Luke 21. These are prophecies that Jesus himself gave about his second coming. He said that he is going to come again. And throughout the ages, in times of trouble, Christians have always lifted their eyes to heaven and longed for the coming of their king. They longed for his second coming. We read in from verse 4 that Jesus gives signs, that's Matthew chapter 24, Jesus gives signs about his second coming. He said that before he comes again certain things will happen that will be signs for us that we will know that he is coming again. That he is about to come. That the king will come. In verse 7. Let me start from verse 6. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. All these are the beginning of sorrows. I want to, at this time, I want us to just 
pick maybe one word out of this. The word pestilences found in verse 7. Now if you use the King James Version or the New King James Version or another version that is based on the Textus Receptus, that's the texts that the Greek-speaking churches used throughout the ages until the translation of the, the authorized version was made, then that word pestilences is there. If you use, for example, the New International Version, you may see that the word pestilences is not there and you may wonder what's happening. Now, in that case, in that instance, I think the translators of the NIV went with the text found in Alexandria or Egypt where that word was missing in their, in their texts. But make no mistake, that word is there. And if you read in uh, the prophecy in Luke 21, you will see that in all translations the word pestilences is there. Some Bible, some Bible translations translate that word, that Greek word, limi, translate it as pestilences or plagues. Uh, in fact, the modern Greek translation translates it, translates it as epidemics. So, it's about great diseases, great pestilences, plagues. And these plagues have happened throughout the years and every time a plague happened Christians looked up and wondered is the king coming? And today as we we go through this pandemic many Christians around the world are asking the question is the king coming? The prophecies in the Bible Reveal that before the coming of Jesus, another ruler will come. We know him as the Antichrist. He will be the son of Satan. He will be the ruler who will take away pe people away from faith in Jesus Christ. In, if you read Revelation 13, you will read about his rule, how no one will be able to buy or to sell unless they have their mark, his mark, in their foreheads or in their hands. And, and in more recent times, as technology has developed, been, uh, there's been lots of talk about how maybe it will be, this will be a computer chip inserted by which we will not be able to buy or sell unless we have that mark of the Antichrist and because many Christians will refuse to do that there will be persecution there will be times of trouble I hope that in Sundays to come I will find more time to to speak to you about prophecy but for today what I want to say to you is don't let your hearts be troubled Jesus told us to do that don't let your hearts be troubled there's many voices out there on the internet. This last week to uh, a brother and a sister whom I dearly love, they sent me uh, recordings of uh, sermons or talks of Christian leaders, pastors who uh, talk about uh, that these times are, the, are leading us to, to the time of the Antichrist. I want you to test those talks with the Spirit of Jesus. What are these talks saying to you? What are they making you feel? These two talks that uh, I received, as I, as I said to you, one of them, the, he came to the conclusion that what we need to do is to support Donald Trump. He said he is organizing Africans for Trump. He said it's only Donald Trump who is going to stop the coming of the Antichrist. That was his conclusion. The other person's conclusion was that in this time that people will not be able to buy or to sell unless they have the mark of the Antichrist, he said that he's been trying for the last five years to develop a digital currency that people in Africa can be using so that the Antichrist's uh, rule on colonial Europe will not extend to Africa. Now, what is this? Telling you, what is this making you feel? When I heard the sermons, I must say that the first thing that 
that came to me is I must flee, I must go and hide, I must, I must run away from these troubles. I must go to my, my little village in Furka where I can support myself, I can feed myself with fishing or agriculture. But the Holy Spirit very quickly said to me, Is this what you would like to do? What about your church? What about your children? Are you going to run away from them? And I had to hang my, my head in shame and say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. This was my instinct of self-preservation. But this is not the Spirit of Jesus. The Spirit of Jesus is the Spirit of self-sacrifice. Jesus, as He entered Jerusalem that day, He knew exactly what was coming. He actually prepared His disciples. Many times He told them, He says, we are going up to Jerusalem and the Son of Man will suffer. He knew what He was coming. In John 12, 27, he says, Now my heart is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but it is for this hour that I have come. Father, glorify your name. This should be our response to this times of trouble that may be unfolding. Father, glorify your name. So, I must say to you, number one, when you hear this voice, is test the spirits. Is the voice making you to want to save your own skin? Is the voice making you to just look after you, yourself? Reject that voice. The Spirit of Jesus says, Except a, a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abides a single seed. But if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. This is the spirit of Jesus. The spirit of sacrifice, the, the spirit of laying yourself on a line, exactly what our doctors and nurses are doing today. They are putting themselves on the line in those hospitals. They may be infected. They may lose their lives, but they feel that it's their duty to do this. And I pray that the church will do exactly the same. I pray that all Christians will not just hide away, that they will be out there serving suffering humanity with the love and compassion of Jesus. So turn, turn your your ears away from the voices that make you panic. Listen to the Spirit of Jesus. Peace I leave with you, Jesus said. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And don't be afraid. Let's pray. Today, Lord, as we thought of your first coming, as we thought of your triumphal entry into Jerusalem, as people were shouting, the King is coming. And then, when they were faced with the demands you made for purity, when they were faced with the demands you made on your type of rule, they rejected you. They nailed you on a cross. But today, millions of people, they pledge allegiance to you. And Lord, today, as we live through this pandemic, we don't know if this pandemic is one of the signs of your second coming. It may very well be. If it is, we rejoice that the King is coming back. Lord, we pray that our hearts will not be troubled. We will not be afraid. But we will expectantly look 
for your coming. And as we do that, may we always be prepared by having clean hearts, clean homes, and may we give ourselves in self-sacrifice, serving others in the name of Jesus. Amen.